guests are asked if they would please respond if they were able to participate and had to vote on such a bill to begin with stating either yes or no, how they would have voted, and then to articulate an explanation for their decision. So without further ado, if we can begin. Uh, we are going to strictly adhere to the time limits as uh, the two minutes. So uh, Peter Brown. Two minutes. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here at this public forum. You're right, uh, museums are a great place uh, for public interaction. Uh, my answer is, uh, although I support the concept, uh, the answer would be no, for a couple of reasons. Uh, zoning without planning, I think uh, I, I, I've witnessed that. It's not a good idea. I think there's a better way. In a way, this seems to me like a Band-Aid. We've had too much experience of reactive uh, legislation in the city of Houston, Band-Aid and it's not an effective uh, approach to get the outcomes we want, uh, nor is it a good use of the taxpayer's money. I don't think we need a separate administrative apparatus or taxing authority. Uh, we have made a lot of progress, I believe, uh, since I've been on council for four years now with neighborhood revitalization and stabilization. That, that's a key issue. The issues mentioned there are, are legitimate issues. But we can be a model for what I call new, new economy urbanism. Uh, we need, uh, uh, we, and we have the authority without zoning, we need, first of all, we need planning, effective planning at the citywide neighborhood level. We, we need uh, options such as plan development district with flexible standards uh, that would incur we'll do some of the same things and encourage private investment. We need to protect our neighborhoods and property values and our historic areas. And I think Old Six Ward is a good example of the, of the Houston-style approach. It works. It's, uh, uh, it's, it's preserved uh, the historic character of Old Six Ward. That concept can expand. And we also need incentives for, for what we're really talking about here, sustainable, smart growth. Thank you. Uh, Roy Morales, your next, please. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. My answer as well would be no. No. There's been six attempts for zoning, and no matter how you cut, slice it, or whatever, this is another attempt at zoning. We passed it in 1993. We had the city charter orders in 1994. The two examples given in this write-up, one of them occurred in 89 before the city charter. The other one occurred when the FAA stepped in and twisted the arm of the city, and there was a chance of not getting federal dollars for those airports. So I wouldn't use those two as, as examples. Now, we talked about another, uh, another government entity. My whole philosophy in government is reducing the size of government and reducing our taxes. And what this would do, would do the counter. I'm the only candidate in this race that has committed property tax relief to families and businesses. I'm the only candidate that has committed to reducing the size of government that's what we need to look at. Now, we do need to do planning, but again, we don't need to use Chapter 42 as a zoning mechanism. People do know that Houston is a no, has no zoning. They're aware of it. They want more deep restrictions. There's plenty of areas in the community for them to search. Let the people decide. Let them choose. Thank you. Thank you. Anise Parker? Thank you. Excuse my back to folks who are, who are behind me. I would have to say reluctantly no. As concerned as I am with uh, the need for uh, protection of residential neighborhoods and uh, reinstitution of, of deed restrictions, the, the devil's in the details on this. And I'm, and I'm while I have an open mind, uh, if I had to, to vote on it, to, something like this today, it would be no. I was in strong support several years ago of State Representative Farrar's bill to uh, widen the number of deed, restriction, uh, deed restrictions that uh, the city of Houston could enforce. I advocated for the use of uh, TERS, uh, land use controls for historic preservation in the Sixth Ward. There are some mechanisms that we could use. And in fact, I authored and passed the uh, minimum lot size and minimum 
setback ordinances from the city of Houston to give some small tool to neighborhoods to prevent uh, inappropriate development. But all of those tools only work in uh, areas with a, a fairly high level of civic infrastructure. It is almost impossible to reconstitute new restrictions, so I'm, I'm tempted by this ordinance, but uh, I would uh, seriously need more information about it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gene Long? Yes, let me first say thank you to the organizers of the event and thank the members of the audience for participating. Uh, I would say no, and uh, it's not because I don't believe that cities have a role in protecting neighborhoods from incompatible land uses. It's because I think that in making the effort to protect neighborhoods, we need to make sure and that we have a uniform and a holistic approach to, to government and to public service and to neighborhoods. Specifically, the problem that I have with the, the legislation that's being proposed, it creates a division between land use and zoning on one hand and planning of infrastructure needs, i.e. streets, i.e. sewer, i.e. drainage on the other. And that is a contradiction that I think we cannot tolerate. We have to have a more holistic approach. Uh, it also creates a layer of government that is an additional layer of government uh, that if allowed to replicate itself throughout the city, you'd have many forms of government trying to compete for narrow city services without a uniform approach. Finally, I think the issue that I am concerned about, though, is the need for us to take what is and be more aggressive with it. And so I would start with the premise that government has a role to play city government in making sure that those neighborhoods who don't have deep restrictions can reactivate them or at least have an aggressive effort to institute them. Those neighborhoods that do have deep restrictions uh, have the assistance of government in being able to protect and maintain them. And in the final analysis, we saw an example today in the Houston Chronicle of the disconnect between transit planning on one hand and transportation streets on the other. It, it, it's an example that we cannot, that, that shows us that we cannot live with that dichotomy. And so I come down on the side of trying to have a more holistic approach to the whole problem. Thank you. And uh, TJ Huntley. I want to thank you for having the forum and thank everybody for coming out. And the answer is unanimous. I vote no, my final answer. And the uh, reason for that, there are certain parts of the bill that I do like, but the, the main reason why I'm going to vote no is because of the fact that there's this one clause in there that I want you to read. In section 375453, the petition must be signed by the owners of a majority of the assessed value of the real property in the proposed district according to the most recent certified county property tax rules. Now it's clauses like this that suppresses the people that have lower income. And uh, Houston, it currently has a very, very little zoning. So basically we have a lot of wealthy families that are a lot of wealthy neighborhoods that are going up around poorly constructed neighborhoods, families that have poor people living in them. And also there's, um, there are uh, multi-million dollar homes that are being constructed around other homes that are about $300,000. And also in the case of Ashby High Rise, another situation, if it was to be erected, if it was to go up, there would be a multi-million dollar project that would be in the middle of homes worth about a few hundred thousand dollars each. So in this case, um, th that would be a bad situation for everybody all around. Well, except for the developers themselves, for those people that have a lot of money. So, anytime you take power from a minority, in this case, the minority is being the rich, and you give it to, and you, I'm sorry guys, and you take it away from the people, you're taking power away from the people. Um, I was raised in a very, very poor family. I was raised in a very poor family that finally we started to make a little extra money and we became middle class people. I will always look after the lower class and the middle class families, always. In situations like this, um, I think that we need to vote no because of the fact of this one, this one clause right there.